Amen. Thank you, Father. Help us to remember the great price that was paid for our salvation. Help us to remember, Lord, what you have done for us. Help us to remember today at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. Lord, we come before your presence this morning in praise, thanksgiving, honor, glorifying you for you are worthy of all praise today. And we pray today for our folks today. We're missing some. We have some that are out on vacation and traveling. We pray for your traveling safety and their benefit. We have some today that are going through times of deep waters and tough times and valleys, experiences. But, Lord, we just know that you're the God who brings us through whatever we encounter. We have about four people that's having surgeries this week, starting Tuesday. And Lord, we pray for your hand, provision of healing that you're going to provide for them. And we have a dear, precious family that lost a saint of God in their physical presence, but she is well accounted for around the throne room this morning. We miss Rena Litchford. Our hearts are heavy, but our hearts also re rejoice in knowing where she is at and knowing that one day we can see her again. I pray for your comfort. For the family, I pray that you will embrace them. And I pray even through this death that, God, you will bring some soul to salvation. And, Lord, touch hearts and encourage them today. Thank you for this family who have been dear friends through the years. And we just pray and we know that your grace is sufficient. Your comfort is always there because you said, I will not leave you comfortless. I come to you. And I just pray that you will pour out now your spirit in this room, in this place, in this church, in its people, in each one that is here today. May they today receive the message of God and may your name be exalted and glorified. May the music today be encouraging to our hearts. May the message be stirring to our souls. And may we leave here today saying truly it has been amazingly good to have been in God's house and to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Have your way. We plead the blood, the name above every name. That name is Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're in this room right now. And we're not praying for you to come down. You're already here. We're praying that you'll just move on us and in us and through us today. And Lord, may we today just draw our attention to Christ, laying aside all the cares of life, but looking to Jesus and trusting in what you've got in store for your people today. And all the praise we will give to you in thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And all God's servants said, Amen. Do you feel the world is broken? The dark won't stop the light from getting through. We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning?
truly love us, He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. And does our God intend to dwell again? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? A lion of Judah who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe. He has made us a kingdom and priests of God to reign with the Son. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? God, for He is worthy. Amen. I walked the pathway in a dream of heaven, a vision so real I'll never there by a river I met my loved one Sweet were their faces So long since we met I see the white rose I see Und 
sold millions to sing praises on that great day. Come from all creation. We'll bring forth each generation to begin the celebration for your standing in the place where at last they'll see his face this is where the saints will gather on that grave each name has been recorded each mansion stands complete and Gabriel stands ready to call home the the saved of all the nations from the dawn of all the creation will bring forth each generation to begin a celebration for we're standing in the place where at last they'll cease his face Where the saints will gather on that great, on that great day.
shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll Don't know where, where to begin When earthly kings surrender to this world of sin To walk the walk and talk the talk Truth is, heaven on earth is one stairway that can't be bought the price has been paid and we believe that our god reigns true believers Stand on every word you say True believers May live in Christ today and This is how we survive And where we mean to stay True believers
If you've had enough and all you can take And your river of tears, they all run They run to an ocean of heartbreak He'll be your moon when your sun goes down He's fire for you if ice is all that's on your ground when your music has died and silence is the sound <clears throat> true believers stand on every word you say true believers made alive in Christ today this is how we survive and where we mean to stay true believers Stand on every word Jesus says So if you need to call on a friend He's there for you Right until the very end Our God is alive Our God is alive. Our God is alive. Forever and amen. True believers. I say, true believers. We're true believers We stand on every word Jesus says Talk today about self-awareness in our continuing study in the book of Romans and today we're in chapter 6 picking up with only several verses 11 through 14 Today we continue in this chapter by chapter uh, preaching on the book of Romans and today we step into an area today where we could call it self well Paul dealt with what we call self-awareness now have you discovered how amazing your life in Christ is really meant to be I think a lot of times in life we just kind of get through and hang on and we try to just live from day to day and we face the obstacles and the challenges of life we let those things somewhat overcome us and overtake us. We sometimes get down, defeating, discouraged, and you know, all of that is somewhat part of living, isn't it? Or is it? It's a choice, so uh, we make a choice on how we live, whether we live for Christ or whether we live not for Christ. We even make a choice as a Christian, whether we live trusting the Lord and putting our confidence in Him, or we're just trying to live by the sight, as sight of what we go through, but not living by faith. If you're living by sight and not by faith, you're missing a tremendous blessing. Because it's God's desire for your life that you live by faith. We don't live by today what we see. We live by the faith in the God whom we trust. And so this God is bigger than whatever you encounter in life. But you know, we get so distracted in our lives about the issues, things that we face and things we go through. We sometimes just flat lose sight of God's presence. We lose sight of the call that he has on our lives. We lose sight of the blessing that he wants to bestow upon us. But when you think about today and the fact that you as a child of God, the amazing things that God can do in your life, I mean, have you today really realized that, you know, we are complete in him as the word of God says? That we are alive in him as the word of God declares. That we are free from the law of sin and death. Additionally today, have you today remembered that you now have not, 
the mind of the world, but now you have the mind of Christ. Well, Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You also have, as declared by God's word, a peace with God, a peace that will exceed and surpass all understanding. You also have today the spirit of God who is greater than the enemy of this world. We fight today, but we're not fighting, as I told the folks earlier this morning. We're not fighting to win, for our victory has already been won at the cross. You have received the abundant grace of God because his grace is never depleted. You today have renewed today in the knowledge that you have of God. His knowledge renews you day by day. Additionally, today you can live by faith in God in all the circumstances that you face. You're now born again. Amen. You're now born again. And oh, what a difference that makes. You now possess the righteousness of God. You're now redeemed. You're forgiven. You're set free. The world has no, no attachment to you any longer. And now today, you today can be fulfilled by the presence of God. And God has a plan. Aren't you glad that God has a plan today because you live to please him? Or are you? Who are you living to please today? Are you in this world to try to gain and get everything that you can? Are you trying to accumulate all the world's riches and all the things? I'm going to tell you something today. One day you're going to die. <laughs> and you can't take any of that with you. The only thing that you can take with you is the possession that you have in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Of knowing him as your personal savior. And oh, what a difference he will make in your life and mine today. Would you stand if you're able? If you're not able, just stay where you're seated for the reading of God's word. Romans chapter 6, verses 11 through 14. And listen carefully to what Paul is recording here for us. He says, likewise, reckon ye. That's an important word, reckon. Reckon ye. Also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield yourself members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God." For sin shall not have dominion over you. Praise God. Sin does not have to have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under, what's that next word? Grace. Thank God for the amazing grace of our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. His grace works some mighty work in your life if you will simply trust him today. I want you to know today it is my desire that the Spirit of God will take these words that I'm going to share with you today and encourage your heart. That it will show you today the reality of who Christ is and what Christ wants to do in your life. Additionally today, further, I, I pray God will take these words and also awaken your heart today that to, you may know him. It's important that we know the Lord. I didn't say it's important that we know about him. I said it's important that we know him. That we are in a walking relationship with God and we know who God is and what God can do in our lives. Romans 6. Paul does something in Romans 6. He puts his, ident he puts his finger on Christian identity. He really brings it out about what our Christianity is about. Let me just tell you something, folks. Jesus talked about this very same issue. He talked about the fact today that you can't serve God in the world. You can't serve God in the devil. You can't serve God in the flesh. You're going to make a decision in your life, and you make this decision every day whom you're going to follow. You can follow today the world, which is going to lead you today to disappointment and grief and sorrow, or you can follow the Lord that will bring you into the joy and the presence of God that never ends. So we make decisions today about our walk and our relationship 
And these things really start to identify us because whether you realize it or not, folks are watching your life. They're seeing how you're living your life. They're observing how you're conducting yourself. They're seeing how you handle the trials and the problems and the difficulties that you go through in life. So to be more specific, Paul then has identified who we are in Christ. I'm firmly believing this today as a pastor, as a preacher, and as a Christian. I really don't believe today Christians know who they are in Christ. They really have not grasped the reality of who God is in their life. Unfortunately, this is a problem in so many of the hearts of Christians as I was sharing with you today. We live in a world of labels today. Thank you. We live in a world that is consumed with labels. You get labels pasted on you. Probably some, if really, if the truth was known, and, and you saw all the labels that people put on you, like these post-its, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You'd probably be walking around and you'd be decorated with post-its. Because <laughs> people would decorate you with the pink ones and the blue ones and the yellow ones and the turquoise ones and the hot pink ones and all the other colors. And they'd have all kind of labels that they'd put on you because you have made some kind of an impression on the hearts and the lives of people. I pray it's been a good impression. I pray it's been one that will honor and glorify God. Some of those labels are good. Some of those labels are not so good. So all those labels seek to identify you, to reveal who you really are. Man, I, I tell you, this, this thing is bottled up in me. My voice won't cooperate. But you just listen to the words today. I don't have to rant and rave for you to get the message. Amen? Amen. But I do like to do that, too. Yeah. Amen. How is it that you can act like a Christian? Folks do that every day. Folks walk into churches every Sunday acting like a Christian. They look like a Christian. Is this what a Christian is supposed to look like? Not necessarily. It's not your clothes. It's not your hair. It's not how you smell. It does help to smell nice. <laughs> it does help to have your hair combed if you got it to comb. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I was telling them uh, this morning in Sunday school, I got what a lot of people pay a lot to get. Platinum blonde hair. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I just wish it would stop letting go. Amen. You know, you start running out of space to draw from. I look at some of you guys, got a big full head of hair. Well, <laughs> not a lot. Amen. But uh, the fact of the matter is, we, we, we have these identity issues, and we try to label people by their look and so forth. And let me just give you a little illustration of that, because I'm around town all the time and in and out of places and going here and going there and doing this and doing that. And it's amazing, even how you dress, people label you. I've got one place that I go and maybe get a Coke or something like that, and they swear up and down, I'm a judge. <laughs> I've got others that think I'm a funeral director. I got others that think I'm a lawyer. I, I, everywhere I go, people identify me. But same person, same me, right? Yep. So I'm going to work in the yard, and I got a pair of old nasty pants on, and an old shirt's got holes in it. I slip one of, Mark's, one of my hats on my head, and, and, and I don't look anything like I'm looking right now. I go in those same places. They don't know, even know who I am. I am treated 180 degrees different than I am if I go in dressed and looking nice with my nice pretty red tie on or blue tie or whatever. It's amazing how people stereotype you and put you into categories and pigeonholes and do all these things in your life. But listen, whether I'm wearing a hat and a pair of old nasty looking clothes or whether I'm dressed and clean and polished and smelling halfway decent, it's still the same person. Amen. How do you live your Christian life? Is it just a facade that you try to make people think you are something that you're not? 
Do you claim, oh, I'm a Christian, but your life doesn't dictate that. Your life doesn't show it. See, that's the proof, isn't it? It's not what you say you are. You can put lapel pins on. You can hang crosses around your neck. You can even put them in your hair if you've got it. And do all these things to try to make people think you are something. But if you're not in Christ, you're not. See, your life is going to reflect ultimately where your heart is at. So how can we act like Christians? You know, if we're not careful, you will find yourself concentrating on sin and those terrible sins that you've committed. And therefore, what you do, you start thinking about all the things. And that's why I'm not so much concerned about what my past used to be. Because, man, that's all under the blood. It's forgiven and God has forgotten it. It's cast as far as the east is from the west. So I'm not looking back and saying what I used to be. Hallelujah, I'm looking forward to what I can be. That God's done a work in my life as he does a work in your life and that we today can be mightily used of God. But what happens is we start thinking, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not this and I'm not that and all these other things. And you become, what happens is in your life, you become self-defeating. And when you become self-defeating, you ultimately become useless for God's kingdom. God did not raise you up to be useless. God raised you up to be used in his kingdom. And what's amazing about him, he never uses you up. Amen. Amen. So you see the sins of others then, and, and perhaps you know, if you're not careful, you begin to feel like, well, you know, I'm not like, we get that hypocritical mentality. Well, I'm not like so-and-so and my neighbors or people I work with, and I don't do this, and I don't do that, and I don't say this, and I don't go to these places. But you, you wind up then putting people the label mentality. And then you try to exalt yourself. Well, you know, I mean, my life, um, I'm superior. No, you're not. If you're saved, you're a sinner saved by grace. But you are important in God's kingdom. Amen. In that text today, we see, we see exactly what God says about us. He gets right down, as I said in the beginning part of this message, Paul puts his finger on it. And ultimately, it's not Paul putting his finger on, it's God putting his finger on us today. I, I want you to see today, and here we go with a the theme, and this really says quantum leaps today about what God wants to do in your life today. Listen, listen. And I want you to listen very carefully because I don't want you to misconstrue. I don't want you to misinterpret what this message is about. I'm not pumping up you today. I'm not making you think, oh, yeah, I am all of that. A bag of chips and a Pepsi Cola and a bag of this and a bag of that. And I'm just the greatest thing since white sliced bread with Cuban mustard on it. Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You've got to do this today. Learn to love who God says you are. Let's say that together. You need this. All right, y'all, wake up, pay attention. Learn to love. Go ahead. All right, let's try it again. You can do it now. Come on. On the count of three. One, two, three. Learn to love who God says you are. Now, nudge your neighbor and say, you need to do that. If they just told you that, you need to nudge them and say, yeah, you do too. <laughs> Amen. From our text today, let me just give you a little summary of these verses. Verses 11 and, 11 and 14 are actually statements today. Verses 12 and 13 then are commands from God. Verses 11 and 14 today tell us who we are. 11, uh, 12 and 13 tells us something it tells us uh, to do something. And see, your life as a Christian is just not getting. Your life as a Christian is about giving and serving. So to learn who God says you are, first you've got to do something today. And that first thing that you've got to do is take an inventory of yourself. Paul used the word reckoned. And I tried to point that out to you there in verse 11. That word actually means what God wants you to do is to consider, which means he wants you to have logic. So you consider, if you take that word, that word consider or reckon means today, it's actually an accounting term today, and it means to tabulate yourself. 
<laughs> you know, we love to tabulate everybody else, but we don't want to tabulate us, do we? So you've got to count today that which is in me. Hallelujah. See, if you try to count you today, you're going to come up short. But when you count who you are in Christ, greater this God is that is within you, you're going to see today that tabulation far exceeds anything that you can ever imagine. To discern, to think about the new reality that lives within you. Understand what happened to you when you got born again, saved, became a child of God. It just wasn't a thing that said, oh, my sins are gone. Whoo, hallelujah. Something went on. Something happened. Everything that was against you, everything that had you in condemnation and everything that had you locked in going to hell, all of a sudden was removed and taken from you today. And now you're a child of God. And listen, when you do that, it's application. I think I use a scripture every Sunday, every Wednesday, about every day. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things will pass away. Behold, all things will become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17. That's exactly what happens. But what happens to us as Christians, we, we, we say, yeah, preacher, that's right. Amen on that. But we do not tabulate. We do not calculate. We do not reckon. We do not consider what this is that's come within us. So what does it require? Then you've got to start taking an inventory yourself. You know, when we use that terminology, I'm going to tell you as a preacher, anytime that I preach and I say those words, you need to take an inventory yourself. You know what the first thing is? I feel people. I feel the iron wall just drop because people relate that to something that they think, oh, I've got to look at me and count all my sins. I didn't say that. You've got today to take a look at yourself and who lives within you today. So that being the case, you've got to discern and you've got to start thinking in the reality of who you are in Christ. Therefore, we've got to consider ourselves today three things that you've got to consider. One, you've got to consider today, you are now dead to sin. Yeah. Amen. Right. The attachment is gone. Second, you've got to understand you are alive to God. Amen. God's real. Yeah. Amen. And third, you've got to realize now you are what? In Christ Jesus. Lord have mercy. That's shouting ground, amen. So if a Christian has an identity, then a Christian has all three of these things in their life. Every one of them today. We are dead to sin, we're alive to God, and we are in Christ Jesus. And listen, the world, the flesh, and the devil, including yourself, cannot remove you from that. Amen. Amen. Sealed. <laughs> sealed. Paul put it this way. He said, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Praise God. At the cross of Jesus, God made adequate and overwhelming today provision for you and I as a sinner through his son, Jesus Christ. So at the cross, God has dealt fully and bountifully today in finality with every aspect of your sin. Amen. Not only is your sins forgiven, but listen, you don't have to sin. If you sin, you make the choice to do it. You choose to do it. But you just don't know what I've been through. That's not your license to sin. You don't know what I've gone and what I've encountered or what somebody said about me. You don't know what I'm up against. It's still no excuse to sin. You have no license to sin in your salvation today. I realize you're still living in a flesh as I am too. And we today are tempted. But you know what? There's a word that's a two-letter word with an explanation point that you can practice every time when you're tempted, and that's no. You do not have to sin. N-O, not K-N-O-W. You've got to know. No sin. Thank you. There are three primary traits of your identity, and the question then arises, are you living your label? Those three things that I just gave you did to sin today, the fact that you have now Christ living within you and God is for you. Those are your identity today as a Christian. Hallelujah. I don't have to walk around with post-its on me. I don't have to walk around with all these attachments and jewelry and everything else to identify. My life is today what reflects Jesus Christ. 
And your life and mine should be reflecting him today. First, we're dead to sin. Let's just break this down for a moment here. I won't keep you too long. You'll get out by dinner time. <laughs> Not really. We are dead to sin. This is a statement today about you and I that we are in Christ. So that becomes an identifying mark. So we have to conclude this to be true of what God says is true. God says that in his word. God today is not a liar. The devil is. And everything today, listen, God, what God has said in his word, you today can put confidence in that. So it's plain today that at the cross of Jesus, we're seeing today that we have died to sin and that we today are alive. And when Jesus died on the cross, we died with him. We died. You weren't there 2,000 years ago, preacher. You're not that old, are you? <laughs> no. Far from it. But my sins were there. My transgressions were there. My iniquities were there. Everything that was wrong with me was there. But he, I died to sin in Christ and what he did for you and I today. And you need to die to sin. Stop practicing it. Stop living for the world. Yeah, but what do people say? Who cares? Hallelujah. I'd rather they say, you know, that duck is peculiar. <laughs> and he is a peculiar duck. Amen. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> but listen, I'm peculiar in Christ. For I have decided today, listen. As the old songwriter wrote, I have decided to follow Jesus. The world behind me, the cross before me. That's a better life. I'm glad God gives me that life in Christ today. That today I can be dead to sin. It doesn't have to manipulate. It doesn't have to control me. It doesn't have to come knocking on my door. Because let me tell you, when the devil comes knocking on my door, you say, what do you do? Send squirt to the door? No, I send Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. First, we're dead to sin. So this is a statement about who you and I are in Christ. We've got to conclude today that God is a God of the word and God of truth today. And it's plain at the cross. Listen, you and I died to our sin. And when we're in Christ, thank God we are dead to sin. So don't tell me, well, I just, you know, I just, no, you did not. You chose to do that. But, you know, I got some persuasion from over here, or my this or my that or my whatever. No, you made that choice. Stop making it. Second, you're alive to God. To be alive to God gives us strength. You know why some of you are so spiritually weak? Because you're not alive in God. You haven't really realized who you have when you have him today. And this should be a broad sense of encouragement to you and I today of who we have in Christ and what we have in God. To be alive in God, you know what it does? It gives us power to endure. Well, I feel like I'm just, my knees are buckling. I'm not going to fall. I don't think I can get through. Yes, you can because God will give you the power and the strength to get past whatever you're in today. He strengthens you from day to day. He is your help. He is your refuge. He is everything that you need in life. You can't go wrong with God. Amen. So to be alive in God, he gives you the confidence to walk through the struggles of life. Did you hear what I said? I'm just about to fall apart, preacher. My knees are knocking and I mean, I'm bold and everything else. I just, I just don't, I, I guess I don't want to get up in the morning. I want to pull the sheets over my head. You keep pulling the sheet over your head. The guy from the cemetery or the funeral home is going to come and pick you up. Stop pulling the sheet over your head and say, I just can't go out. Yes, you can. Because it's God who gives you strength to endure whatever you're going through. Amen. He will lift you up. Praise God. You don't have to walk over all shot at and ducking bullets and everything. Listen, you can stand tall for God. And today you can be an instrument of his righteousness today. And you can today surely not be ashamed. That's what Paul said. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know what he's saying? I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Amen. Because he lives within me and he is greater than whatever I'm facing today. And I'm glad today not only does he do that, but you know, if it was God today that sustains you. Today, you would never make it through anything that you face if it wasn't God who was there with you and for you. Additionally, God has given you a reservoir of joy. You know what? I don't see much joy in Christians' lives anymore. We, we've been branded by the world, identity. 
Everything's wrong in the world. I don't know what we're going to do. I tell you what I'm going to do, man. I'm looking at the world and I'm looking at it through the pages of God's Word and through the lens of this book. And it says, when you see all these things come to pass, look up and rejoice because your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. 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 <laughs> I've got joy ringing in my soul. Even in the hard places of life, even when the world's all messed up, still today, because you know what? This reservoir, it just keeps filling you up. It just keeps working. And that's why the, the Word of God tells us that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. Woo! You're better than the Energizer, buddy. Amen. You don't need batteries, you got Jesus. Amen. amen. Praise God. Woo! Somebody said amen. amen. To be alive in God removes fear. To be alive in God changes. Oh, here's a good one for you. It changes your attitude. You ever met a Christian who's got an attitude problem? <laughs> I just turn them over to God. You know, he can change your attitude. And he can do it expediently too. To be alive in God strengthens you for your today. When you have that thought to quit, it gives you the resolve you can't quit. You too far in debt and you can't get out in the Lord. Amen. To be alive to God prepares you for whatever you'll face for the future. I, I don't know what tomorrow may hold, but I know who holds tomorrow. And as a believer today, you're not only forgiven today, but you know what? You are also able today. And folks, you're able because God says you're able today. Amen. Third, in Christ. Dead to sin, alive in God, all because you're in Christ Jesus. Amen. Isn't that a marvelous thing today? It, being in Christ reminds us that, that God sees us not as we see ourselves, but as God sees us in Christ Jesus. You realize every sin that you have forgiven, it comes through Christ, through his blood. You realize every blessing you get comes through Christ. You realize every good gift and every perfect gift comes through Christ. Amen. To be in Christ means today you are in union with Christ today. You're in fellowship with him based on the life, the death, the burial, of, and the resurrection of our Savior today. Much of our trouble today, you look at it, it comes from the fact that we, we fail to actually today and, actu and, and, and consider ourselves dead to sin, alive in God and in Christ. That's why we're just not living that Christian life. Let me just say this about this. Now, listen, I've appealed to a lot of things. And you may be sitting there and saying, that sounds like one of those self-help messages. Nope, it's not. I'm not telling you how you can get more. This is not prosperity theology because I don't believe in it. Amen. And if anybody ever tries to preach it in the church, I'd set them down in a heartbeat. This is not standing in front of the mirror and telling yourself how beautiful you are. <laughs> oh, I'm just so all of that. <laughs> now I look in the mirror and say, Lord, help me, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Some of you need to do that too. <laughs> this is not an exercise in appealing to your self esteem. To make your flesh feel good. Your flesh doesn't need to, well, you don't need to feel good in your flesh as far as the world is concerned in sinning. Because let me tell you, you can find pleasure in sin, but it passes. Real pleasure is found in Christ. Amen. This is you coming to grips, concluding to be true what God has declared about you today. This is you today understanding that God, what he has said about you, your life, and what he wants to do in your life if you'll turn your life over to him. Verse 11 is you realizing something, but here's what happens in verses 12 and 13. It's you doing something. See, your Christianity is just not you sitting on your backside doing nothing for Jesus. Huh. Amen. Amen. So what do you got to do? First thing you got to do, you need to take charge of your life, friend. And the only way you can take charge of your life is giving your life over to Christ, to the spirit of the leadership of Christ today. We are commanded to become what God has declared about us. So 
Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, Paul said. You've got to understand today that you are in Christ and sin no longer has the power to reign over you. You don't have to sin. Don't let sin rule and reign today like a king over you. The battlefield is your mortal body. And you're in battle every day. We all are. But in our minds, in our bodies, that is where it takes root to draw us down to defeat. Consider the fact today, why let that which died at the cross rule over you? You're dead to sin. You're dead to the world. You're dead to the devil. It's, it's a fact that when Christ died, you received him in, in, into your heart. Your sins died at that point. Why are you letting what is dead roll, reign and be king over your life? When Jesus shall rule your life and reign over you and bless you, amen. Hallelujah. And he shall do it. What we've all we all have these things of what's called natural desires that, you know, God's given us natural desires too. But listen, sin wants to pervert those natural desires. Sin wants to ruin your life, and it's nothing but the ploy of Satan. Even though you're a Christian, sin thinks it's king of your life. Well, it's time today that you do something. There's a time for a spiritual coup in your life. There, there, it's a time of dethroning of sin. It's a dethroning of yourself for there's only one king and his name is Jesus. See the eternal crucified Christ who died on the cross who purchased out of redemption today he has dethroned sin and he is still the king of kings and the lord of lords. You know what you need to do? You need to crown him lord of your life. Controller, director, king, everything reigning over your life today. Sin is a spiritual bully. We see so much on TV and in our school systems about people that bully people. Bully, bully, bully. <laughs> Even your animals sometimes turn out to be a bully. <laughs> Jerry's did. <laughs> Amen. He saw him as a good tenderloin and he clamped into him. Amen. <laughs> Folks, I'm telling you, sin is a bully because it comes from the bully of all sin, and that's the devil. But there's a friend <laughs> that's closer than a brother, and he has already knocked the devil's teeth out at Calvary and already won our victory today. So Jesus is our elder brother, and today when sin shows up on your heart today, all you've got to do is call on elder brother Jesus and he will take care of it. Amen. Amen. So when you look to Jesus, you're drawing closer today to this place that is called the throne of grace. And when, what you find at the throne of grace today is exactly what the word, right of Hebrews tells us. In Hebrews 4.16, you find mercy and grace to help in time of need. So you need to learn today to love who God says you are. Don't love the flesh. Love the difference that God's made in your life. Second, I just got two quick points and I'm through. Take care of your lifestyle. Amen. See, it matters how you live your life. Oh, preacher, I don't see nothing wrong with sitting down and having a few. Mm-hmm. Well, that same crowd you're drinking in front of or doping in front of or whatever you're doing in front of or cursing in front of, what, I mean, these are just, there's so many things that can just pull up. You know, it's just not those things that we do. It's how we live our lives. You see how people see us. You're not having a positive impact for Christ because they see you. Well, are they doing that? Because I'm telling you right now, somebody has looked at your life when you sin. And they say, what's the difference? They do. They live for the world. They carry on like this. They talk like this. They, this, that, and the other. What impact are you having? People are observing you every moment of your life. Just like going to these places and picking up a soft drink or something, people are watching. You think, oh, nobody sees, nobody got, oh, yes, they do. Huh. People see what you're doing. 
You say, well, it doesn't matter what people think. Yeah, but God sees what you're doing too. Yeah. It's important that your lifestyle is in, in, is in concert with what you say that you are in Christ. So it's important that you live for him today. Being saved means being purchased by the blood of Jesus at the cross. And by the way, have you been to the cross and been redeemed? If not, I pray you will today. Folks, you need Christ into your heart and your life. You need to be born again. You need to receive him today. It's important today that you love what God has said about you, friend. You need to take an inventory of your life. And lastly, today, take comfort in God's real grace. Amen. To be liberated is to be liberated from the law. I'm not saved by the law when you're not either. But if you're not liberated from God, you're not under grace. And you're under condemnation. There are two things that God's law cannot do. One, the law of God cannot do anything to justify a person that has broken it. And the second thing is the law, can, the law of God cannot do anything to break the bondage of sin that you and I are in because it can't set us free. But I'm glad today the blood of Jesus can set you free. It can redeem your soul. For that today you need the grace of God. Whereas sins were many and our grace, whereas sins were abounding, grace did much more abound. And therefore today, this is only found at the cross of Jesus. It seems like the cross is important. In this world we're living in, a lot of people don't see the importance of the cross. A lot of churches don't see the importance of the cross. A lot of people don't see the importance of the blood or the grace. But I'm going to tell you right now, you can't live your Christian life without any of those things today. So God is offering you, offering you grace today to change your life if you're lost and that you can become a child of God. And then God's offering you something that is called a new life. One day you're going to die. The question is, where will you go? Well, I hope I make it. I'm not hoping I make it. I got a no-so salvation. And if you don't have that no-so salvation, you're really gambling with your life. Even worse, you're gambling with your eternity. You can know Christ. You can know him. And you can know that you're saved today. See, God is also offering you today victory over your sins, Christian. Victory over your troubles. Victory over your trials. Victory over your difficulties. Victory over your defeats and depression and all the other stuff. Over everything that you go through that's overwhelming you, it's not bigger than God. And God can handle it today. So my plea to you is simply this. Will you come to Jesus today and take the victory that he has for you? And receive today what he has said about you. That you and I as born again believers are more than a conqueror <laughs> through him that loved us. Would you bow your heads for a minute? Thank you for the water. Quick question for you. You, you and you alone can answer this. Are you born again? You know Christ is your personal Savior. Preacher, I'm not sure. I don't know. And honestly, I don't know what to do. Well, let me invite you to, today to the reality that Jesus loves you. And that he died for you on the cross. And he doesn't want you in a guessing game about your salvation. He wants you in a knowing situation. He wants you to know him as your Savior. Do you realize today that you are a sinner? Sure, we all are. Do you accept the fact today that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Absolutely, yes, we do. Why don't you ask him to come into your heart and your life and save you today? Right now, in this room, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Christ, I pray you'll pray this prayer and mean it with your heart. Pray with me. Dear God in heaven, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I need Jesus. Forgive me of my sin, O oh Lord, as you said you would. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Redeem me. Save me. God, make me your child right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for becoming my Savior and my Lord. May God 
Give me the grace to live for you that my life will reflect Jesus in all things. Preacher, I prayed that prayer a moment ago with you. I meant that prayer. If you did, would you do something? Would you slip your hand up right now and just say, Preacher, I have asked Christ into my heart and my life. I ask Jesus to save my soul. I ask him to redeem me. It's not hard. If you did that, just slip your hand up. I'm not going to embarrass you or humiliate you. I'll pray for you that God will strengthen you and help you and give you his blessings today. Anyone? Just throw your hand up. Listen to How about you, Christian? Have you taken that inventory? Is everything right? Have you realized who you are in Christ? Let's stand to our feet. In Christ alone, Father, I pray your spirit. Move on our hearts. These altars need to be populated with people praying. I pray right now that we will come. Come praying. Come searching, Lord, desiring to live for you. Coming surrendering our all unto you. Coming seeking your help through the troubled waters that we're in. God, draw people to altars of prayer. Will you come right now? As God's calling, will you come in Christ alone?